As my mother's hands hold my shoulders to get my attention, I see my siblings backing away. What did I do, I thought. Mom had just asked me to do the dishes. And I responded like the typical 11-year-old with a big ugh and a snarky, I know. Heaving an audible full body sigh, I stomp around the table collecting dishes. This reaction was not on my mother's approved list. I knew to be obedient and quiet, always doing what she said. Mom says, everyone is scared of you. We don't ask you to do things because of how you behave. I'm screaming inside. Why are people scared of me? What I really want is for mom to hug me, to love me. But I know that's not coming. I fight back burning tears and retreat into numbness. I hear mom's question. Do you have anything to say? Do I have anything to say? Everything I say is wrong. You don't understand. Thoughts tumble over themselves, but I can't allow even a single word to escape. Finally, released to my bed, I cry myself to sleep, knowing now for sure I'm bad and I hurt people. My entire life, I've grappled with the feeling of not being seen, heard, or connected. The feeling that everything I do is bad and wrong. To survive, I need to be quiet and take whatever it is that I get. I'm a one-year-old standing outside mom's bedroom. She's sick. I want her to play with me, but I have to be quiet. I have to be a good little girl. And it hurts inside. I'm six years old. Mom says, that shirt is too small for you. It's time to give it to Robin. I don't want to, it's mine, I say, pulling it away. Don't be silly, stop making a big deal out of this. Scolded yet again, I promise myself, I'm never going to speak again. Squatting on the floor with a little spiral pad, my eyes blur with tears. I'm always getting in trouble. And the tally marks are my evidence. From babyhood to today, I play out the choices I made to escape notice and to avoid punishment. At the high school dance, I stand quietly merging it into the wall so no one will notice me. Then, hating myself so much that I want to be a completely different person, I go to a college where not a single person knows me. Next, not knowing what love is, I get myself into a toxic relationship. For nine years, I talked myself into staying with Stephen, my husband. I do this for Mark, our son, but we have screaming fights. It hurts my heart to see poor Mark crying himself to sleep. I used to cry myself to sleep. So when are you leaving, Stephen sneers. My answer is always, I'm not leaving. But he is so certain that I am leaving. It's like my words bounced off a concrete wall. I back away, retreating to the bedroom. Stephen follows me. I climb out the window, down the stairs, and escape to my car. I drive to the safety of my office, where finally I can fall asleep. Seeking a way through this pain leads me into personal development, counseling, and healing. Doing the work, I revisit my childhood. I remember that scene, mom's hands on my shoulders, my family backing away, we're scared of you. And I remember saying to myself, I'm bad and I hurt people. Now I see that the story I made up 
as an upset 11 year old has been running my life. This led to detrimental choices. I also see the pain and hurt of a confused little girl wanting to be loved, wanting to be seen and connected. Today, awareness gives me the freedom to make new empowered choices. I turn my obsession with connection into my profession. This journey made me both strong and compassionate. I relate with the struggles of others. My healing helps others to heal. I'm having a casual coffee shop meeting with Vera, a networking acquaintance. She shares about a confrontation that happened during a photo shoot. Vera, I'm curious, would it be okay for me to run your human design chart? Human design is like a blueprint for your personality and why you are the way you are. Uh, sure, she says. Oblivious to the coffee shop chatter and milk frothing, our conversation dives deep. Vera, you say surprising or shocking things. Oh yeah, she agrees. I continue. When you were young, you probably got a kick out of shocking people. <laughs> I'm good at that. She's grinning. Vera, you wield words like a subtle knife, shocking people into taking action. You're a transformation agent, nudging stuck people out of their comfort zones. Vera and I are deeply connected, sharing this heart space of truth. The energy is deliciously electric. I call this state shine. With human design, I access details about Vera that wouldn't normally come up in conversation. I describe her better than she knows herself. What she might have thought was bad and wrong about herself is actually her superpower. Her bold words and actions can be celebrated. In a few minutes, we went from having a surface conversation to being deeply connected. I live for these interactions. Now I create experiences of shine at will, turning up a flame of love inside people's hearts. I'm at the grocery store and see Robert filling a bin with apples. In my hand, I have a miracle card. One side says, you are a miracle. The other says, you are loved. These cards are a way that I connect with people. I pause before approaching Robert. Each time I give someone a card, it's a risk. It takes overcoming a little mental barrier of concern. It's that same old story that I'm bad and I hurt people. But now I'm aware that the story is there. So instead of acting based on this story of fear, I take action from my commitment to connection. I'd like to give you something. Robert looks up at me and smiles. You don't need to. Pulling out his wallet, he shows me the card. He's carried my You Are a Miracle card in his pocket for years. I'm stunned to realize that Robert remembers me. He sees me. Robert remembers the day I gave him that card years before. The day we met touched him so deeply that he carries the reminder of our connection every day. We are moved to tears and hugs. Two human beings connected and seen, standing in the grocery aisle between the cereal and the bananas. Memorable connections like these happen because I create them. Purposely, I take the risk and contact people, making a difference for them and for myself. 
at the bank, in the library, and on the sidewalk. The greatest gift I have for you is connection in daily life. It's so simple, choosing to truly be with you in a space of love and generosity. Let the truth of who you are shine through your heart. I'm in here. I see you. I see you. I am my heart light. Together, you and I, we shine.